Hello everybody, I am Miss Natalie and this is Read Along. We're reading from Kalamazoo Public Library in Kalamazoo, Michigan. This is book three, The Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan. And our series is The Heroes of Olympus. So we have read chapter one and today we will be reading chapter two. When we finished up yesterday, our heroes from Camp Half-Blood had shown up at Camp Jupiter on Argus 2, Argo 2? I think it's Argo 2, excuse me, uh, which is their big battleship. And things uh, were just heating up with, I think Annabeth had just found Percy. So let's get right to it because we want to see their reunion. Ah, that being said, here is my cat. Her name is Six. Uh, she's, as you can see, my cat and muse extraordinaire. There she is on the left being kind of derpy faced. And then on the right, this is her being sweet and cuddly, which does not happen all the time. But I wanted you to see her because occasionally, as I'm reading, you will hear meows and or uh, like bells tingling. And that is, that's just her. You know, I'm at home reading this for you guys and she likes to contribute occasionally. And then finally, contact information. So as I mentioned, you know, my name's Natalie Isham. Have my pronouns on there if you would like them. And then finally, an email address at the bottom. This way you can ask me questions, get a hold of me, uh, whatever you would like. I do like hearing from you guys, so don't be shy. Also, what I would love is if somebody would email me, tell me where you're from, you don't have to give me super detailed location, just a general idea, and like, how did you hear about this? We've been doing the Percy videos now for almost a year, we're at about 10 months, and it's really fun to hear people from all over the country and uh, from outside of the country, and I always just wonder, like, how did you find us? So yeah, don't be shy. Okay. Chapter 2, Annabeth A sea of hastily assembled demigods parted for Annabeth as she walked through the forum. Some looked tense, some nervous. Some were bandaged from their recent battle with the giants. But no one was armed. No one attacked. Entire families had gathered to see the newcomers. Annabeth saw couples with babies, toddlers clinging to their parents' legs, even some elderly folks in a combination of Roman robes and modern clothes. Were all of them demigods? Annabeth suspected so, though she'd never seen a place like this. At Camp Half-Blood, most demigods were teens. If they survived long enough to gra graduate from high school, they either stayed on as counselors or left to start lives as best they could in the mortal world. Here, it was an entire multi-generational community. At the far end of the crowd, Annabeth spotted Tyson, the Cyclops, and Percy's hellhound, Mrs. O'Leary, who had been the first scouting party from Camp Half-Blood to reach Camp Jupiter. They looked to be in good spirits. Tyson waved and grinned. He was wearing an SPQR banner like a giant bib. Some part of Annabeth's mind registered how beautiful the city was. The smells from the bakeries, the gurgling fountains, the flowers blooming in the gardens, and the architecture. Gods, the architecture. Gilded marble columns, dazzling mosaics, monumental arches, and terraced villas. In front of her, the demigods made way for a girl in full Roman armor and a purple cape. Dark hair tumbled across her shoulders. Her eyes were as black as obsidian. Reyna. Jason had described her well. Even without that, Annabeth would have singled her out as the leader. Medals decorated her armor. She carried herself with such confidence the other demigods backed away and averted their gaze. Annabeth recognized something else in her face, too. In the hard set of her mouth and the deliberate way she raised her chin like she was ready to accept any challenge. Reyna was forcing a look of courage while holding back a mixture of hopefulness and worry and fear that she couldn't show in public. Annabeth knew that expression. She saw it every time she looked in a mirror. The two girls considered each other. Annabeth's friends fanned out on either side. The Romans murmured Jason's name, staring at him in awe. Then someone else appeared from the crowd, and Annabeth's vision tunneled. Percy smiled at her, that sarcastic troublemaker smile that had annoyed her for years, 
but eventually had become endearing. His sea-green eyes were as gorgeous as she remembered. His dark hair was swept to one side, like he'd just come from a walk on the beach. He looked even better than he had six months ago, tanner and taller, leaner and more muscular. Annabeth was too stunned to move. She felt as if she got any, clo any closer to him, all the molecules in her body might combust. She'd secretly had a crush on him since they were 12 years old. Last summer, she'd fallen for him hard. They'd been a happy couple for four months, and then he'd disappeared. During their separation, something had happened to Annabeth's feelings. They'd grown painfully intense, like she'd been forced to withdraw from a life-saving medication. Now she wasn't sure which was more excruciating, living with that horrible absence or being with him again. The Praetor Reina strained. With apparent reluctance, she turned toward Jason. Jason Grace, my former colleague. She spoke the word colleague like it was a dangerous thing. I welcome you home, and these, your friends. Annabeth didn't mean to, but she surged forward. Percy rushed toward her at the same time. The crowd tensed. Some reached for swords that weren't there. Percy threw his arms around her. They kissed, and for a moment, nothing else mattered. An asteroid could have hit the planet and wiped out all life, and Annabeth wouldn't have cared. Percy smelled of ocean air. His lips were salty. Seaweed brain, she thought giddily. Percy pulled away and studied her face. Gods, I never thought. Annabeth grabbed his wrist and flipped him over her shoulder. He slammed into the stone pavement. Romans cried out. Some surged forward, but Reyna shouted, Hold! Stand down! Annabeth put her knee on Percy's chest. She pushed her forearm against his throat. She didn't care what the Romans thought. A white-hot lump of anger expanded in her chest. A tumor of worry and bitterness that she'd been carrying around since last autumn. If you ever leave me again, she said, her eyes stinging, I swear to all the gods. Percy had the nerve to laugh. Suddenly, the lump of heated emotions melted inside Annabeth. Consider me warned, Percy said. I missed you too. Annabeth rose and helped him to his feet. She wanted to kiss him again so badly, but she managed to restrain herself. Jason cleared his throat. So yeah, it's good to be back. He introduced Raina to Piper who looked a little miffed that she hadn't gotten to say the line she'd been practicing, then to Leo, who grinned and flashed a peace sign. And this is Annabeth, Jason said. Uh, normally she doesn't judo flip people. Raina's eyes sparkled. You're sure you're not a Roman, Annabeth? Or an Amazon? Annabeth didn't know if that was a compliment, but she held out her hand. I only attack my boyfriend like that, she promised. Pleased to meet you. Reyna clasped her hand th firmly. It seems we have a lot to discuss. Centurions! A few of the Roman campers hustled forward, apparently the senior officers. Two kids appeared at Percy's side, the same ones Annabeth had seen him chumming around with earlier. The burly Asian guy with the buzz cut was about 15. He was cute in a sort of oversized, cuddly panda bear way. The girl was younger maybe 13, with amber eyes and chocolate skin and long curly hair. Her cavalry helmet was tucked under her arm. Annabeth could tell from their body language that they felt close to Percy. They stood next to him protectively, like they'd already shared many adventures. She fought down a twinge of jealousy. Was it possible Percy and this girl... No. The chemistry between the three of them wasn't like that. Annabeth had spent her whole life learning to read people. It was her survival skill. If she had to guess, she'd say the big Asian guy was the girl's boyfriend, though she suspected they hadn't been together for long. There was one thing she didn't understand. What was the girl staring at? She kept frowning in Piper and Leo's direction, like she recognized one of them and the memory was painful. Meanwhile, Reyna was giving orders to her officers. Tell the Legion to stand down. Dakota, alert the spirits in the kitchen. Tell them to prepare a welcome feast. And Octavian, you're letting these intruders into the camp? A tall guy with stringy blonde hair elbowed his way forward. 
Reyna, the security risks. We're not taking them to the camp, Octavian. Reyna flashed him a stern look. We'll eat here in the forum. Oh, much better, Octavian grumbled. He seemed to be the only one who didn't defer to Reyna as his superior, despite the fact that he was scrawny and pale and for some reason had three teddy bears hanging from his belt. You want us to relax in the shadow of their warship. These are our guests. Reyna clipped off every word. We will welcome them and we will talk to them. As Augur, you should burn an offering to thank the gods for bringing Jason back to us safely. Good idea, Percy put in. Go burn your bears, Octavian. Reyna looked like she was trying not to smile. You have my orders. Go. The officers dispersed. Octavian shot Percy a look of absolute loathing. Then he gave Annabeth a suspicious once-over and stalked away. Percy slipped his hand into Annabeth's. Don't worry about Octavian, he said. Most of the Romans are good people, like Frank and Hazel here, and Reyna. We'll be fine. Annabeth felt as if someone had draped a cold washcloth across her neck. She heard that whispering laughter again, as if the presence had followed her from the ship. She looked up at the Argo, too. Its massive bronze hull glittered in the sunlight. Part of her wanted to kidnap Percy right now, climb on board, and get out of here while they still could. She couldn't shake the feeling that something's about to go terribly wrong, and there was no way she would ever risk losing Percy again. We'll be fine, she repeated, trying to believe it. Excellent, Raina said. She turned to Jason, and Annabeth thought there was a hungry sort of gleam in her eyes. Let's talk, and we can have a proper reunion. Oh, is that it? Oh, no, it's totally it. All right, no spoilers. Okay, everybody, have a wonderful day. Tomorrow, we'll read Chapter 3.